Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Dr. Arnold Nirenberg. I've been a licensed clinical psychologist uh, to practice in the state of California since 1974. And I like to say I've been licensed to walk upon this earth since 1941. I'll very shortly be 82 years old. And it's truly my pleasure and my privilege to be in your presence and have this opportunity to visit with you and to bring you uh, insights, lessons, and inspirations of a lifetime. The intention is to uplift you and your loved ones for the rest of your lives, to bring to you that kind of inspiration, that kind of knowledge. That's my intention. The title of today's presentation is Getting Started. Getting Started. In many areas of life, that's the toughest thing, is getting started. The... Uh, the, the consistency, the momentum once you're going is one thing, but getting yourself started. Let's look at some specific things. It could be exercise, could be a weight loss program, could be a job you need to apply for, could be courses you need to enroll in, a, a university you need to enroll in, uh, an app that you want to get. Maybe starting to, maybe you're dating and you want to sign up for an app. Got to get started. You start dating again. Whatever it is, or it might just even be, you know, something for that day that you need to get started. You know, you don't, you don't even feel like getting up. Yeah, you've gone through a lot of stress at the job. I don't feel like doing anything and getting started. Just getting started the day. Get up, you know, have your breakfast, your coffee, watch the news, whatever you do, and, and get yourself getting, getting started. Getting started is a, it's a science and an art. It's a science and an art. I like to just say this. I'm very good at getting started. Really good at it. So I really could tell you a lot of things that, that have worked. Um, and of course, then once you start, you, you, you don't want to just leave it hanging. I mean, finishing up is very important, but just about getting started. Let's start off with one that's pretty universal. Getting started for your workout program. The key to getting started is having small steps. If it's a major project that you want to get in shape, you want to start working out, that's something that requires consistency every day. It's not something you just do once or twice. You, you want to be getting started. So getting started on working out, remember this. Less is more. When it comes to working out and you want to get started, less is more. It's better to do three minutes of exercise, whatever it is, than zero. It's easier to go from three minutes of exercise to an hour than it is from zero to three. It's easier to go from three minutes to an hour of exercise than from zero to three. Why? Because the hardest part about getting in shape is what? Getting started. Getting started. That's the hardest part. When I want to do my doctoral dissertation, it's a huge, it was a huge project. And uh, I really was understanding this whole thing of getting started. It's pretty overwhelming what you have to do. So I said, well, I'll just do 10 minutes a day toward, on my dissertation. And I finished all the coursework. I sit there 10 minutes, work on something, do some research, maybe some writing. I'll just leave for 10 minutes. Sometimes 10 minutes will turn into 30 minutes. Or an exercise, you might commit to three minutes. Three minutes may turn into uh, 30. Or it might just be three minutes. Uh, three minutes is better than zero. The continuity, 10 minutes of working on dissertation was a lot better than zero. I mean, I eventually finished it. You know how many people are in graduate school finished? It's called, they finish all their coursework. And it's called everything but the dissertation. It's called everything but the dissertation. It's a phenomenon. Why? People don't finish the dissertation. The key was, I committed to 10 minutes. I have a, a pull-up bar on, on my daughter. I come out of my bedroom. Next bedroom is, is one of my daughters. She's now moved out and has her own place. But I have a, a pull-up bar on there. Now, if I tell myself I want to see how many I can do and I want to max out, I'm not going to do that. Most of the time, I don't feel like doing much of it. 
So I said, well, let me just go do, you know, three, about three or four pull-ups. That's it. So boom, 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 boom. I'm done. Less was more. So getting started doing the pull-ups meant giving myself just something like that I know I was going to do and I can do on a regular basis. Three to four pull-ups. Now, same with the gym. I'll tell people just if you go to the gym and you don't feel like working out, a lot of times the last thing you want to do, say, to get started, just go in and commit to 10 minutes and then boom, out you go. Less is more. Now, there are four laws of activism that you want to apply. Four laws. Best time to do it is now. The worst time, later. Never quit and no excuses. Do it now. That's the best time. Not later. That's the worst time. <laughs> it is the worst time. Later is the worst time. And never quit. Just keep at it, keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. And no excuses. Look, don't believe your own excuses. It always comes down to priorities. That's key. Priorities. It always comes down to priorities. If it's not a priority, just say it's not a priority, I'm just not going to do it. But once you say this is a priority, then commit to some amount of time to get started. And the key, the couple of keys in getting started. One is not to make too big a commitment of how much time you're going to put into it to begin with. You need to enroll for a class. So do it now. It's better now than later. Now, that's a key concept is now is a trigger word. So when I would be setting world records uh, as a world champion body power lifter on a bench press or T-boy strongman pull or the power pull up, you'd see me standing there, you know, just looking very meditative. And what I'd be saying to myself, I can, I will. I can, I will. And when I go now, I'm all in. Now. You only want to use the word now when you're going to do something. That's got to be a sacred word, a trigger word to trigger your into activity, to get started now. It's a key concept here, let me tell you. When you commit to this way, it doesn't matter how you feel. Say, I don't feel like doing it. It doesn't matter. Once you commit to three minutes, you do the three minutes, and yeah, do boom, 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 and then bah, forget about it. So the key to getting started is you cannot pay attention to how you feel. There's times most of us who have worked out for long, I've been working out for 67 years. There are times that the last darn thing I want to do is work out. I don't want to go. I just don't want to do it. I say, okay, now I'll go in, do five, 10 minutes, and I'm out. Go in, boom, 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 out. So the key is not your feeling. To get started, you cannot depend on your feeling. You need to really get that. You can't depend on, do you feel like it? Oh, I don't feel like it. Well, it's not a priority. So you switch from a feeling uh, motivation to a thought motivation. You have that thought now, and you do it. And, you know, and that word now becomes sacred. If you're not going to do it, do not say now. That now means you're going into action, whatever it is. The key, again, is not to depend on feeling. You feel like doing it, great. You don't feel like doing it, it doesn't matter. You're committed to it. So I, you want to look at your priorities, commitment, but you know, you may have a priority one day that you really want to exercise and get in shape. The next day, you don't feel like it's a priority. You don't feel very committed to it. What's the key thing about this? It doesn't matter what you feel. You go by the thought. I, I said, I'm going to do this, and you do it. So the key here 
Keeping my word is my first priority always. That's one of the laws of honor. Keeping my word is my first priority always. If you say now and you say you're going to do it, you're going to do it. You say, you know, every day this month I'm going to go and I'm going to, I'm going to hit that floor, do some push-ups, at least three minutes, push-ups, leg raises, boom, you're in it. Say every day I'm going to make some of these phone calls that I don't feel like making. I'll give three minutes, five minutes, whatever it is, you do it. Now, so keeping your word, that's how you get started. If you say, I'm going to do it, and you don't do it, well, if you're telling other people you're going to do it, you don't do it, after a while, they don't believe you. That's not the main problem that other people don't believe you. No, 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 they don't believe you. Well, of course not. You don't do what you say you're going to do. The real damage when you don't do what you say you're going to do is you don't believe yourself after a while. You don't believe yourself. That's where your word loses meaning to you. That's a, that is a disaster. If others don't believe you, that's a problem. You not believing you, that's a disaster. Keeping my word is my first priority always. I can, I will, and when you go now, you're all in. Doesn't matter what it is, you're all in, you start. You have people who are night people. They, they don't want to get up in the morning. They don't want to get up in the morning. And a lot of people like that. I used to be one of them. But then I, I, I applied this method, I'm telling you. This was like 50 years ago. I, well, my, I, to me, it was open my eyes, which is a signal for now. And I didn't feel like getting out of bed. I jump out of bed, and I recommend you jump out of bed. You go throw some cold water on your face. You step outside, get a little fresh air, and you're up and going. <laughs> you're up and going. But you have to be able to be governed by the thought, not by feeling. Thought is the trigger, not the feeling. If you just get that from today, you're way, way ahead of the game. You can, you can achieve everything with this, everything. This is the true secret to succeeding in this world, to achieving whatever you set your mind to, whatever is a priority to, you will achieve it, I promise you. Best time to do it is now, worst time is later. Never quit, and no excuses. Do not believe your excuses. Ah, I don't feel well. You know, my my uh, my partner needed my help with something. I want to do that. But come on. Uh, I was feeling a little tired. I was hungry. I was. Uh, my son had a cold, sick. Ah, three, five minutes, you, you do it. But you're not going by a feeling. If you, if you, if you master what I'm saying to you, it's very simple. You'll get started, and then you stay with, you stay with that. Persistence is what pays off. The main correlate with success in any field is not intelligence or even knowledge, although intelligence and knowledge, knowledge help a lot. The main correlate is grit, sticking to it. The person will stick with it, stick with it, stick with it. That person has the highest probability of success, grit. These are the secrets. This is the formula for getting started and getting started. You know, if I had to say, well, Dr. Never, you've been successful in so many areas. I have been. I've had plenty of failures, but I've been very successful in many areas. People say, what's, this, what's the, what are the, one of the main secrets? I know how to get started. Now, when you get started and you stay with something and you commit to it, you can't worry about failure. It fails, it's not a problem. You, you, you get started again, and you start again, and you start again. Failure is fine. Having a setback is fine. 
Now, some people are terrified of failure. It's like going to destroy their self-concept so they won't even start something new. They just got to keep, they won't start something new. But once you accept it, you will have many failures. In fact, I have one of my lectures called The Power of Failure. I went through all my failures in my life, talked about all the good that came out of it, the lessons I learned, the strength that I gained. In fact, for the honor athlete, the saying is this, humble in victory, strength by defeat. Strength by defeat. The honor athlete, just to give you one of the applications of this, this whole concept. So the key is, jump in. Make some reasonable preparation for whatever you have to do, but you just jump in. And don't, even if you're not ready, you jump in. So oh, I'm not totally ready to do that. You jump in. Once you jumped in and you're doing it, you'll get ready. You'll get ready. Once you're in it, I'm not ready to do that. I jump in. Be, that'll make you ready. Ha! That makes you ready is when you jump in. Could be weight loss. You say, well, you know, I need to lose 30 pounds. But I really like, you know, I really like my pasta. I don't want to give that up. So you might make a decision. Well, well I tell people, you like your pasta? Okay. Eat a lot of broccoli. That's going to help you. Eat a lot of broccoli. That'll fill you up a lot. Extremely healthy. Crucifix vegetables help prevent cancers. Eat a lot of broccoli. So I don't say give up the pasta, eat a lot of broccoli. So eating that, we're eating less of high, high glycemic carbs, getting their broccoli, see a little progress. And then they say, well, all right, now I have some broccoli and chicken breast over there. In fact, that's what bodybuilders have when they want to get all cut up and lose body fat. So they had that. You can you move slowly, get whatever pace you want to go into it, but you get started. Somebody says, I know I should quit smoking. I'm just not ready. I'm very stressed out, this and that. I never tell people to quit. I say, well, when you're ready, you're going to stop. When you're ready, you're going to stop. How many cigarettes you smoke a day? I do maybe 20 a day. Think you can make uh, 18? Oh, I can do that. Yeah, 18, well. So start. All right, let's do the count today and let me know how it goes. You're 18. Well, you started the program. Still killing yourself, but not as not as rapidly. And then see. Yeah. Then the next day I still want to do 18 or you want to go 17? Oh, you still want to do 18? I stay with that. The thing is you started. You started your smoking cessation program. Getting started. Now there are some motivating factors that help. One of the motivating factors to getting started is desperation. A person's desperate. Or a person says, you know, enough is enough. What I'm doing is not working. So they're ready to start something new. Ready to start a new approach to things? Yeah, because this isn't working for me. So desperation, frustration, fear, enough is enough, being fed up with how things are going. Those are all great motivations to start a new course of action. You might say, this, you know, I might have said to somebody, you know, you want to be yourself, be genuine. Yeah, but who's going to like me for who I really am? So the person's pretending to be somebody they're not and, feeding people lines and whatnot and kind of getting by up to office. I'm tired of doing this. You've got to be tired of doing it. Yeah, I'm tired of doing that. You ready to start being yourself? Yeah, I'm going to start being myself. You have, I tell them, well, you have the right to be who you really are as long as the expression of true self in a respectful, real manner. So the person may start really saying what's on their mind. Typically, they end up being real and not respectful. You really start Telling somebody, you know, I'm just going to be real with you. I'm tired of bottling it up. I don't like it. You're stupid. I don't want to see you again. Just being real, like Dr. Nuremberg said. Well, I didn't say be real. I said be respectfully real. So you might need to say to the person is, hey, 
We said what you did. I felt humiliated. I feel hurt, especially embarrassing to do in front of people. I really need you to apologize to me if you could. It'll make you feel better. That creates a connection, a bridge. So getting fed up, these are great motivations, desperation, frustration, fear, all of that. See, it's not, whatever I'm doing is not working for me. It's a good motivator. But that motivation can only take you so far. You then have to use the thought now. You need the thought, I'm going to commit to doing this, something that's very doable. And when you make that commitment to doing this, three minutes of exercise or adding broccoli to your diet or, uh, you know, enrolling in that class now. Now, not later. Never quit. No excuses. Keeping my words, my first priority, always. You're keeping your word to yourself. That's the power. That is the power. Simple, but most powerful truths are simple. Well, it's been my, my pleasure to present to you uh, getting started and any, any person walking the path of honor. It's one of the demands of honor to pursue your priorities, to pursue your destiny. That's a demand of honor. Honor demands uh, stepping up and rising to the, the challenge arising to the opportunity. I'm going to open it up to any kind of comments or questions. Jay, anything you want to ask or add or say? Yes, Dr. Wood, and you've mentioned it a few times, the lecture is that the, the toughest part of anything we do is getting started. It's not finishing, it's the getting you know, the, that whole process. Getting but, started but is start it. When you finish, you finish, whatever it is. But like you said, it's better to do three minutes of exercise than no minutes. Or it's, three it's, minutes it, of meditation than meditation. Well, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that. You know, I do I do these five rites of Tibetan yoga. It's about 20 years ago, I was doing it. I was doing it for maybe five or ten minutes a day, regularly. Then I slowly increased it, went up to 20 minutes. 20 minutes. I didn't really want to do 20 minutes. I stopped doing uh, five rites of Tibetan yoga for 15 years. I stopped for 15 years. <laughs> then I said, you know, I really want to start doing that again. And I went back to five or 10 minutes. And I'm, I'm, I'm doing it ever since for years now. Small amount. Started back because I, I didn't, I didn't aspire. If I would have aspired to 20 minutes, I, would just, I wasn't going to do it. This prospect just seemed really boring to me. You see, I mean, it's beneficial. It just seemed really boring, the idea. Five to ten minutes is doable. I stopped for 15 years. I'm an expert on this. Uh, I've, I've learned. Uh, so you, you're learning it from somebody that, that really knows uh, how to start and f finish up projects without being highly organized or highly prepared, you just jump in. Yeah. Good point, Jeff. I'm glad you said that. Uh, Tracy, anything you want to add or, or say? Yeah, I, I agree with, I mean, everything you're saying. Getting started is the hardest part, but what's even harder is staying consistent. That's Stay why you consistent. have to be reasonable. Less is more. Say, I'm going to be consistent three minutes a day. If you say, I'm going to work out for an hour a day, you, that may or may not happen. It wouldn't happen for me at this point. Yeah. yeah. So you got to, less is more. Exactly. Best time is now. Worst time is later. Never quit. No excuses. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Pers perseverance pays off big time. Grit. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I mean, what you said is correct when you were saying that you don't even have to know a lot, be knowledgeable in whatever it is, but as long as you have grit or persistence in whatever it is, 
then you could be successful. I've jumped in with so much ignorance to so many things and uh, fell on my face and picked it up as I went along. Absolutely. I mean, my life's a testimonial to that. You know, uh, back in the 60s, I lived in a commune. And a lot of us were graduate students at the University of Texas. One guy in the commune was Buck. He, he never finished eighth grade. He was a retired drug dealer. So while the rest of us as intellectuals were talking about everything we're going to plant in the fields, we had about 60 acres, so we're going to plant and we're going to do this, that, and the other thing. We had these long discussions. While we were doing it, talking about it, Buck was out there doing it without any consultation, plan, just doing it. Now, the interesting thing about Buck that really taught me a lot, he screwed up half of what he did. I mean, that guy was one big screw up. Half of what he did was wrong. But the next day, he would come and clean that up and make it right. So, wow. See, I learned so much from Buck. I said, yeah. I learned actually to jump in, do it, mess it up, and clean, mess it up and clean it up. Jump in, mess it up, clean it up. It's a good little jingle. Jump in, mess it up, clean it up. That's Messy what, action. Buck, Buck did it. Eighth grade education, retired drug dealer. He was well successful as a drug dealer, but he had left that life behind. Yeah. Uh, Stacy, any comments or questions you have? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed this topic a lot. I really, one thing I, I was thinking about when you were talking is what about what what do you suggest when you're overwhelmed with so many tasks on your plate and that's I'll, I'll i'll be honest with you i i don't use the word now and don't commit to things if i can't if i know i cannot deliver now that's and best I, if you know, can't do it we're talking about something that you can commit to three five minutes with now for something longer uh thing is you got started you make some kind of a dent into it three five ten minutes whatever you're making it something of a dent like when I did my dissertation I committed to 10 minutes a day and I did keep to it sometime at 10 minutes I stopped but many times that would go a couple hours so you commit to a doable time frame and if you can go long you go long if you don't you don't want to you stop that that formula works yeah could you could really quick too i just want to want to say i watched i went and saw the movie the um jesus revolution last week that's why i cut out short and there was a lot of committing to now and grit and perseverance and you know even if you're not a godly person the story was interesting and and another thing when you mentioned living in a commune um it all kind of arose from the hippie, hippie drug using oh, yeah. something better, yeah. not war, but peace. I mean, it was just really fast. I had no idea. Yeah, yeah, those were uh, the best of times and the worst of times, as they say. Uh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Stacy. Bernice, anything you want to ask or say or add? Um, yeah, um, let's see. So it sounds like to me, you have to just get into it regardless of how you feel in the moment. That's the key. If you go by your feeling, you, you, it's a bad criterion for movement is your feeling. Feelings come and go, but the thought, we'll do three minutes now, boom. You got to, that's got to be your trigger to go. A thought. That's the whole. How to take one get one takeaway point is that excellent. Yeah. Um, so definitely, I'm gonna try to implement that. Don't rely on your feelings. Put it into a thought category. Now take action. I definitely feel like that is, like you said, the key. Um, and I love that buck story oh, that buck like, story. yeah <laughs> yeah 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 
Because sometimes, like, I struggle with, like, perfectionism, like, oh, I can't get started because it's not perfectly set up yet, or, um, you know, the conditions aren't right, or whatever the, you know, is going on in my head, I overthink it, it turns into a feeling. But that Buck story, it's it's amazing because you're learning as you're doing. So jump in, jump try? in, jump in, mess it up, clean it up. Mm -hmm. And then something that Stacy said um, about getting overwhelmed by your task list, um, I definitely can identify with that too. Or or another thing is um, suffering from setbacks. You know, like I got sick recently, and you know, it kind of puts me in a state of like, oh man, I feel so like I fell behind. You know, on these tasks, and how do I pick that back up? You know, get that momentum again. Three minutes, five minutes, usually three usually three to ten minutes is a good commitment. It's very doable. Uh, and then that can go on for 20 minutes, an hour, but it might just go three minutes to ten minutes and you're out. But uh, that'll keep you, that consistency, uh, uh, consistency, persistency, perseverance, grit, uh, totally necessary for success, totally necessary to achieve. Yeah. Totally yeah, just like getting started, definitely, yeah, take that into consideration. And like you said, like, sometimes I've tried that method where I'll get started on something, and then it just sucks you in, and then you're you're into it, and you're, like, going. So as long as you don't overdo it, like you said, with the working out, give it, you know, go into it as slowly as you have to. Uh, I told you what happened with my five rides to Tibetan yoga when I went from about uh, five or ten minutes to twenty minutes, I stopped for fifteen years. I just didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do twenty minutes. Uh, it's, ah, it's too overwhelming. I don't want to do twenty minutes. Ah, I'll do maybe tomorrow. I don't want to do it. And I went fifteen years later. I went back five to ten minutes, and I'm doing it. Good. Yeah, and that's, that's the key. Really I, 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 I'll tell you this formula I've given you. This way. Um, And sometimes even that five or ten minutes of five rice and yoga, I don't even want to do it. So the key there was I take out the yoga mat, I lay it out, put it on the living room floor. Once that's down, sometimes that's enough to get me to do it. If I'm staying out there, I say, well, it's out there. Uh, sort, of like wait, sort of like working out. If I have to drive to a gym, I sometimes I won't do it. But if I have weights in my room, I've got it in the garage, I've got it in my building where I work, uh, I work. I've got it in my my office. I don't have to go far. There it is. I can I can do it. I, it's right here. So having having whatever you need to do be right here. So if you want to start, you know, doing some things with your weight, and you want broccoli, you have it right here. You know, maybe you have a little bag you carry with you with the broccoli in it. Uh, of course. You always have the gym right there. The, the earth is your gym. The floor, you can always go down and do some squats or push-ups or leg raises or whatever. But you want to have it, when you go to three to five minutes, another important concept is whatever it is, you want it right here. Uh, if I need to do some writing, I don't really feel like doing it. I'll go to the dining room, put a pen, the paper there, put my glasses on the table. It's there. Yeah, because that could be enough to stop me. Just going to get those, you know, you're doing so many things. You have those big lists, like Stacy was saying, a list of this, that, and the other thing. But when it's right there, so you want it, you want it right here, so you can do it right now. You want it right here. You know, you got to make a call. You have the phone right here. You want to write something, the pen and paper, every setup right here. You want to do some weightlifting, the weights are right here, <laughs> right here. Right here is another good concept, let me tell you, right here. You have whatever it is to get started right here. When I was doing my doctoral dissertation, it was my bed. By the way, at that time, it was a mattress on the floor. I roll over it. The desk was right there. It was a homemade desk. Sit in there, have my books set up on, on this desk. It was right there. I didn't have to go somewhere. It was right there. So to really hit these things and get it done, it has to be right there. Now, right here. Right here now. Little things can stop here. A little thing like having to drive to the gym or go to your office to get your, you know, get your equipment to write something. 
Yeah, that could be enough to just stop it. Right here, right now, boom. It's a, it's a, it's a boom, boom philosophy, boom, boom. Some people call me Dr. Boom, boom. <laughs> boom, bam. It's the only way. If you want to get things done, if you really want to achieve in your life, you must follow this. Remember again, not by a feeling, but, but by the thought. The thought's there, you do it. That's the trigger, the thought. Particularly the thought now. Very good, very good, Bernice. Very, very good. Who else would like to make a comment or ask a question? I was uh, thinking about uh, Who is what this? you were saying. This is Emily. Oh, Emily. Okay, Emily, good. Hi. Um, yeah, so I was, you know, it's funny because the gym is always on my mind. And what Bernice touched on about perfectionism, it's like if I can't go do it, you know, an hour, like it bothers me, you know, but I also do follow a lot of people who talk about consistency and just getting started and making, you got to go with, uh, you know, habit because, you know, your motivation isn't always going to be there. So it, like you said, if you go three minutes, you know, at least you're getting the habit of going down and eventually you can obviously do more than three minutes, you know? So if you get that habit where the habit isn't the problem anymore, you're going to excel and then just not, and then just having that mindset and knowing that that's what you're doing, the consistency, if you are prone to perfectionism, because there have been times when I leave early and I, I get down myself like, see, I didn't do it good enough. You know, why am I even trying? So I like a lot of that resonated with me, what you were saying. That's an enemy of the mind. That's definitely an enemy that, yeah, yeah you know, I should have done more. Yeah. But but a lot of times we wouldn't have done it if we had to do more. We just wouldn't have done it. Uh, okay, if you get that thought, you feel, gee, I, I didn't do enough. I should have done more. Okay, you're having that thought. Then balance it with, but at least I did something. And at least I did something. So you let that thought of being disappointed in yourself. It's all right. Allow that disappointment to be. You're not responsible for that. You didn't choose it. Ah, I didn't really do enough. And you go, at least, and then you go, at least I did something. So you let that be. So you have the two thoughts. I'm very disappointed in myself for not doing more. And then I, at least I did something. Both thoughts. Disappointment, well, at least I did something. Two sides of that. And you let each side be. Don't try to erase that disappointment. You know, you're disappointed in yourself. You know you could have done more and you didn't. You're disappointed. Fine. So be it. At least I did something. Persistence. Consistency. And then you just let it be with those two those two dimensions right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you want to put yourself down for it, that's fine. But just make sure you also add the rest of the story. You always want to go to one of the one of the derivatives of the commandments of honor, the four commandments of honor is what's the best true story I can tell myself about this situation? The, the bad situation is I could have done more. It's true. The rest of the story is, at least I did something. That's finishing the story. Both sides are true. You could have done more. What was the best true story about that? At least I did something. So you want to follow that derivative. I call it derivative of the warrior's commandment of honor. The, command, the warrior's commandment of honor is, I'm grateful for the power I gained from hardship. One of the derivatives of that is, What's the best true story I can tell myself about this problem? Just balance it. Be disappointed in yourself because you sure as heck could have done more. Could have done hours more possibly. And at least I did something. That's the good news. That's the way I have to work that. That's the best way to work it. It's not just telling yourself a story, a positive story. You tell yourself a best true, a true story with the emphasis on the word true. Not fooling yourself. Yeah. Good point, Emily. Good, good point. Glad you brought that up. Thanks. You're, you're welcome. Thank you. Anybody else have something you want to add or say? Or ask?
Hi, Dr. Nirenberg. It's Christy. Oh, Christy. I, did I call you and I thought you were Didn't I call your name earlier? I was trying to figure out how to unmute uh, okay. my video. I'm glad that I got Christy. your name right. Okay, Christy. Yeah. I, I think for me, um, I'm naturally an early riser. And so in my mind, I've got 101 things that I want to get done by noon. And when I don't get those things done, I, I get frustrated and feel down on myself. But I think... Um, you know, some of the better habits are to maybe think about these things the night before and make a list, which having I a have list that you, where you can check things off. But let's say you have 100 things, as you said, and you only got to 80. So you can say, oh, my God, how frustrating. I, I, I didn't do 20 of them. True. Oh, God, I didn't do these 20. And then, well, at least I did 80. So the best true story the, bad, the, the worst true story, I didn't do 100. I only did 80. I didn't do 20 of them. That's the worst true story. It's true. The best true story is, well, at least I did 80 of them. That's 80%. That's the, that's the rest of the story. Yeah. 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 yeah so I, I think um, just, you know, having the confidence in myself to... Um, be satisfied with what I am able to check off. And sometimes it's nice to write a list and just have that cross off. Well, listen, I've already listen let, me, let, let, let me really be totally honest and accurate about this. I'm not asking you to be satisfied. Right. Did I do 20. What the heck? I, had 100 things. I didn't do these 20. It's so frustrating. I didn't succeed at doing my whole list. You're not going to be satisfied. That's not the point. Now, it's a true bad story. Now, the true best story is, I did do 80. Thank God I did the 80. It doesn't erase the, the other side. Yeah, both are true. Don't fight the negative. It's a losing battle. Right. You just also allow the negative to be and also finish the story. That's only half the story. You didn't do the 80. You're very disappointed. You failed at doing the full list. No way around that. I right. succeeded in getting at least 80 done. Thank God I got the 80. Balance. Balance, yeah. That's the key. Makes That's the key. Makes sense. Don't try to change a bad story. Bad story is true. <laughs> Make sure you finish, but you tell the whole story. Which also, you got to tell yourself the best part of the best true story. That's also true. Yes. That's key. Got it. Yeah, that makes total sense. Thank you. Yes, it took me a long time to be able to say these things to people. It took me a long time to understand the idea of balance. Yes, yeah, and that, that's what I need to, that, that's one of the areas of, of focus for myself too, is, is that balance, finding that balance. Yes. Somebody, you know, has an aspiration to be a billionaire and just became a millionaire. He failed. I failed to become a billionaire. I did become a millionaire. Balance. I failed at this, but I mean, I mean, I mean, number of millions. Failure is real. We had an aspiration. He didn't succeed at it. Making millions. Hey, that's not that shabby. Right. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, thank you. Thank you. Well, the participation, the points made were wonderful. Uh, really, really help round out everything that was being talked about here. So my pleasure to present to you, getting started. Thank you so much for being here. Destiny is in your deepest struggle. God's will and mine be one, and I wish you well. You are co creator, respectfully real. There's a way in the valley 
that turns weakness to steel. We're known through all eternity. From strife we gain power. Clothed in grace and love, disciples of honor. All the days of our lives refuse the way of shame. We wish no body harm, have no one to blame. Your high calling will be done, and your eyes now glow. In darkness, praise the good, like waters from the desert flow. I pledge my love all the days of my life. I pledge my soul to all that is good. I pledge my heart to my brothers and sisters who I join in the light, leave a legacy of honor. We're known through all eternity From strife we gain power Clothed in grace and love Disciples of honor All the days of our lives Refuse the way of shame We wish nobody harm have no one to blame Your high calling will be done And pure eyes now glow In darkness crave the good Like waters from the desert flow